any additional thoughts from you on how people can think about this in a time when it seems so baffling and bewildering what the rules are of the game going forward there are no written rules right now i think you have to go by feel and instinct you know when you when you play a sport and you get good at a sport you don't think when you play you 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 go by instinct and feel and um that's that's what it is to be good at something you know when when you when you're a good golfer you don't think about 80 things in your backswing you just get up and hit the ball because you have instinct and feel and and in any sport any sport or any game it's about instinct and feel and this is no different this is a big game it's a high stakes game but you need to go by your gut instinct and your feel and your intuition is there save you in times of chaos and uncertainty. It's just that so few people trust the inner voice and listen to it and go through life regretfully saying, darn it, I knew I should have, I should have done that. Um, I, I think you, you do what, what the biggest money in the world is doing and you distance yourself from the dollar and traditional assets. And, and what's the worst thing? If you're wrong, you have gold and silver, which have been considered wealth for 5,000 years. What are the only assets that every central bank in the world owns and is accumulating? That's gold and to a lesser extent silver. And I think that is all you can do to give yourself a fighting chance. What the biggest money in the world is showing you is that that is what they're choosing. And if that is what they're choosing, even though the price and the rhetoric doesn't always align with that, and that's by design, then I still think that is the, the they're showing you their hand by the the amount of central bank accumulation and by the uh, drawdown that we continue to see on on Comex and and I do want to mention that but then I also want to talk about a question that one of your listeners has the bank um, we saw uh, this last week uh, the U S Mint by the way has totaled two hundred eighty eight thousand ounces of Eagles and Buffalo's gold in March. That's the highest monthly total since October 98. So a lot of people are seeking refuge in gold. And on a year-to-date basis, the gold coin sales are close to 600,000 ounces. That's the highest first quarter since 1999, right before Y2K, which was a, a big deal. I, I was in the market back then. I owned Miles Franklin back then. And I remember how chaotic it was then, which is a sliver of what it's like now. Um, one of your listeners asked two questions uh, on last week's show, and it was about, uh, I said there are 15 contracts of silver out there for only uh, every ounce. And, and really what, I'm, what it means is that there's 15 contracts for every thousand ounce bar. Well, I read just the other day, and it was on Schiff Gold on one of his uh, newsletters that it, it, I think he said it was 17 and a half so it's growing the rehypothecation, meaning that there are 17 contracts issued for every bar. And each one of those contract holders believes they have access to the bar. Well, if if all of them try and do that, only one in theory would get it. 16 would be cash settled. So this is what you talk. This is what the Hunt brothers saw in 1980, that there were more paper contracts than there were bars backing them. Uh, and they stood for delivery. They bought up all they could and stood for delivery, and it would have broken the exchange. So the rules were changed. Well, that's exactly what I am saying here right now, is that the price of silver is not allowed to to reflect its real value when the contracts are sold at, at 17 times rehypothecation. In other words, if if each contract was attributed to a specific bar, there would be, in in essence, 17 times more bars there than there are. So that that's what I mean by there, and I think I think it ultimately is incredibly bullish for the price of silver when this system of rehypothecation is broken. And the other question that he brought up was, he says Andy likes to bring up the Belt Road Initiative and what a massive infrastructure project it is: highways, roads, bridges, railroads, etc. But I've never quite understand how building an asphalt highway or laying down steel tracks for a railroad would translate into massive demand for silver. And this is from Joe. And Joe, the answer is that you're connecting 75 to 80% of human population, a lot of which is in unindustrialized areas in Africa and South America. And when you look and see what China is doing in, in their endeavors, it is building infrastructure. 
uh, they, they build the railways and, and the ports and the roads and the bridges, yes, but they have to connect all of this and connect the people through digital connections. And so certainly the need for silver in a digital world is extreme. And when you are bringing online to, to an industrialized capacity, a good portion of human civilization that has never had that, why the need for silver is extreme. So it has nothing to do with the actual infrastructure itself. It has more to do with connecting all of these, these people and, and, and all of this massive amount of, of land mass um, digitally. And so that is where the need for silver comes in, and that's what I was talking about. So I'm always happy to at least explain to people my rationale on 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 these topics that I bring up. And I try to research as, as well as I can and fact find. And and indeed, I did read it on Shift Gold that it was either 17 or 17 and a half. I just read it yesterday or the day before. It was 15 in the one I read a few weeks ago. So that is the genesis of both of those questions.